My brothers and sisters in Christ, in the last several days from last week, I, I unpacked a theme presented to us by our readings, the need to conquer pride and to embrace the cross. We saw the, the, the wage of sin, the wage of pride, all the way in Genesis from original sin in the garden to the Tower of Babel. Meanwhile, with his disciples, Jesus is struggling to make the impression of them of the centrality of the cross. They're coming to understand who he is and to accept him, uh, to have a faith, if you will, in his identity and in his power, but the scandal of the cross is too much for them to understand or to accept. And so, after the, the dialogues that happen and then the transfiguration, they come back down the mountain and today we hear this episode. A crowd is gathered because Jesus only took Peter, James, and John up the mountain. The other disciples have remained behind. And in the meanwhile, uh, a possessed boy has been brought to them. This fascinating episode unfolds in like manner. The disciples who had been given authority and had had success in exorcisms in the past suddenly are confounded. They've been found unable to accomplish the job. So when Jesus rebukes a faithless generation, he's speaking as much to his disciples as to anyone else. Why? Because he realizes that his clock is ticking. He's on the way to the cross, and how short of understanding and faith his disciples still are. So, what does he do? He tells his disciples, and the translation here sometimes covers this up, the, the command that's being issued, but he's directing the disciples to bring the boy to him. So, then we hear the dialogue with the, the parent of the child, if you can help him, Jesus, to which brings about the wonderful explanation, if you can. And that, as Jesus says, all things are possible with faith. The man, in a memorable way, says, uh, I do believe, help my unbelief, which is a wonderful prayer for us as Christians to both acknowledge in humility our shortcomings, but pray that God can transform our hearts. But as we hear it in the story, the, Jesus goes on to, to heal the boy, drive out the demon, and so finally left alone with the disciples, they essentially ask, Jesus, what gives? Why couldn't we do it? He says, this can only be done through prayer. Was this necessarily a different kind of exorcism? Maybe, maybe not. But what is thematically present here is that the disciples likely, much like the people of the Tower of Babel I talked about last week, about the trap of falling into self-reliance, uh, of making one's own plans, using one's own ingenuity, and beginning to operate independently of God. In the same way, the disciples have been invested with this authority, and in the absence of Jesus, they've probably gotten a little too full of an idea of themselves, as if they are suddenly now these great miracle workers of their own, when in fact, their power relies in them bringing things to Jesus. The disciples haven't become gods, but just as Jesus then commands them, bring him to me, then, with them gathered around, Jesus brings about the healing. And so when he says this can only be done through prayer, he's giving a rebuke reminding us that nothing is possible for us without him. In fact, we're not being asked to do all these things on our own, but to bring them to him, to have faith, to bring our needs, our issues, not just as people ministering in the church, but even for ourselves, to bring it all to him. We're not expected to have the answers. We're not expected to have the power. Instead, in faith, we must know the Lord Jesus and bring all things to him. And in that place, all things become possible. And so, once again, as we prepare for Lent, just two days away, may we cast down our pride, prepare to take up the cross, but most of all, and our self-emptying through our heightened time of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, may we bring all things to the feet of Jesus. May God bless you all.